Should we trust the IRS? This sounds more like China than America, but I'll let you decide. According to a new report, the government wants to have your face on file. That's right, the IRS will require facial recognition online. It could happen as early as this summer, and privacy experts are already voicing their concerns. So submit a video selfie to the IRS to verify your identity in order to access your account. What could go wrong? I'm David Fiorazzo, and this is Christ and Culture. The IRS has contracted with a third-party service called ID.me to protect users' privacy and reduce fraud, so-called. CNET reports this, quote, to verify their identity with ID.me, taxpayers will need to provide a photo of an identity document, such as a driver's license, state ID, or passport. They'll also need to take a selfie with a smartphone or a computer with a webcam. Now, the new process is supposedly another step the IRS is taking to try ensuring taxpayer information is provided only to the person who legally has a right to the data. But from 2011 to 2015, an identity theft nightmare was exposed at the IRS. During the Obama administration, the IRS discovered more than one million Americans had social security numbers stolen by illegal immigrants. Due to corruption or embarrassment, officials never bothered to tell the taxpayers. So let's get this straight. The IRS decided to protect the identities of thieves rather than notifying and protecting innocent victims, citizens. And now they want to require facial recognition? Well, according to the Washington Times, those taxpaying citizens during the Obama years who were the victims of theft had their numbers stolen by illegal immigrants who needed to give employers a valid social security number in order to get a job. And here's another revelation. In order to protect illegal immigrants, also known as lawbreakers, employers are prohibited from asking questions and probing too deeply even when they suspect fraud. But the insanity doesn't stop there. The IRS issues illegals a special taxpayer ID number. Why? They're more concerned about working illegals paying taxes, even if they're not supposed to be in the United States. In fact, those non-citizens who use that special tax ID number are even eligible for some tax credits. What a system. Now, for years, Republicans complained to the IRS that it is protecting illegal immigrants from discovery by allowing the use of these individual ID numbers, but failing to share the information with other agencies. Remember, corruption is nothing new for the IRS. Who can forget how the Obama-Biden Justice Department used the IRS as a bully pulpit to punish their political opposition and deny nonprofit status to many Christian and conservative groups prior to the 2012 presidential election? But the scandal-ridden partisan IRS couldn't keep covering up its loyalty to the left, and truth was leaked out little by little. Back in 2015, I reported on the alleged computer crashes the IRS, uh, at the IRS causing employees to lose internal emails. The problem is those employees were under federal investigation in a case involving the targeting of conservatives. That's right, more than 20 IRS employees, probably more, a lot more, conveniently had their computers crash, which caused the deletion of, or the loss of emails, as well as their hard drives. Who can forget, and yet many Americans have, former IRS exempt organization division director Lois Lerner. IRS officials, including Lerner, worked to silence conservatives using IRS intimidation tactics. Now, documents showed Lerner wanted to bring charges against someone and make an example out of them. Under her watch, the IRS placed holds on the, on the processing of hundreds of applications for tax-exempt status from organizations known to be conservative. So, by limiting the ability of conservative or Republican groups to freely campaign and mobilize 
for a cause or candidate, the IRS indirectly affected election outcomes across the United States. Out of all existing nonprofit groups flagged in 2014, for example, for IRS surveillance, 83% were conservative. You guessed it. Now, the government monitored the group's activities, their websites, and other publicly available information. But wait, even citizens who donated to Tea Party affiliated groups were audited 10 times more than average Americans. One of the most glaring facts revealing Democrat corruption was this. Of all the groups the IRS selected for audit during those Obama-Biden years, 100% of them were conservative. That's right. So fast forward to today. Now, the government says the change to this uh, facial recognition is necessary to protect U.S. taxpayers from identity theft, if you can believe it. But as multiple news outlets have already reported, privacy advocates say it's not only invasive, they also point out the company behind ID.me has a spotty record in verifying people's identities. So we should be justifiably concerned about a potentially new threat to our freedoms and privacy. So knowing the IRS and its past issues with corruption, discrimination, privacy, and data theft, some are questioning why they're trying to implement potentially glitchy software and use this method of ID or identification now. What's up with that? Well, apparently they're afraid of being hi they're, they're being afraid of being hacked. Really? That's comforting. So let's conclude with some words, wise words, by President Ronald Reagan. Government's first duty is to protect the people, not run their lives. Governments tend not to solve problems, only to rearrange them. By the way, the IRS says uh, the new facial rec technology will not affect your filing of the, uh, your 2021 taxes. So what a relief. Sleep well, America. Your government is tr just trying to help. Famous last words, right? God bless you and keep speaking the truth about things that matter.